As Tesla Gaming has discussed numerous times on the channel now, the Southeast Asian video game market holds significant advantages to publishers, and one of these is the ability to distribute games to the Western market in English, whilst avoiding any of the complications that may be seen with a full official Western release. The truth of this can be seen in the upcoming release of Bullet Girls Fantasia, a title that would be unlikely to come to the West through traditional means for various reasons. Bullet Girls Fantasia is now the third Bullet Girls title from the Japanese developers, and Fantasia Fantasia is the first one to get an English release. The Southeast Asian region is extremely linguistically diverse, and English is used as the common language in things like business. This means that games are often released in either Chinese, English or both to get around this linguistic diversity. The third person shooter sees you face against hordes of enemies alongside AI controlled buddy characters, and it is especially notable for its various suggestive elements. Clothing will be destroyed as you take damage, and there is also something called interrogation training, where you are tasked with extracting information information from the characters through various naughty means. To celebrate the upcoming English release, Sensor Gaming has got in touch with PlayAsia's marketing and community management specialist Hardy Pace for an interview about censorship, Asian English titles, what PlayAsia are doing to support these releases and more. Just to clarify, while Sensor Gaming does have a close relationship with PlayAsia due to how important what they do is to censorship, this isn't a sponsored video. There are affiliate links in the description though if you want to show that you support what Sensor Gaming is doing and that no extra cost to you. But with that out of the way, let's begin with the interview. Firstly, please introduce yourself to our viewers. I currently manage PlayAsia.com's Play Exclusives line of physically released indie games, as well as managing the campaigns of the majority of Asian English releases that come through our store. I've been working in the video game industry for the past seven years, five of which have been with PlayAsia.com. What does the term censorship mean to you? It isn't a favourite word at the PlayAsia offices, we hear it on a almost daily basis. Simply put, it is just the attempted removal of ideas from society. A lot more positive can be achieved if we talked about themes instead of suppressing them and the people who enjoy them. What are some of the different types of censorship seen in the gaming industry? With the most recent example of Agony, we see ratings boards and marketplaces can be a huge barrier to overcome. This has been the biggest influencer in nationally as often seen in places like Australia, UK and Germany. Self-censorship happens at publisher levels for a variety of creative and PR reasons, as well as the fact that they have knowledge of rating guidelines as they develop a title or make a localization decision. In cases like Agony, it might be an attempt to sneak past or an unfamiliarity with the process. In your opinion, how much does this affect Japanese games coming to the West? Japanese games in general come to the West if someone is passionate enough about the title within the company or the market size is apparent. Luckily, the fans of Japanese games are incredibly passionate and have a habit of making their love for a game or series known. It sometimes takes a while for the information to get to publishers, but many have their ear to the ground. The lack of Japanese games with sexual themes arriving in the West intact is due to a variety of reasons, but in my opinion, often due to the ambiguity of character age as well as the less playful view of sexuality often found in the West. You'll sometimes see the reverse with violent games in Japan. What are some of the reasons that a game may not be released in the West? Lack of funding or lack of confidence in sales are the two biggest factors. The translation process is not cheap, especially visual novels with word counts already difficult to tackle in a single language. Fans can be quite assertive about what games they want at times, but the average gamer isn't obliged to make what games they are willing to buy known in advance. The absolute best thing to see is gamers building communities around shared interests or specific titles or types of games, especially because they allow developers and publishers to see their fans' passion consolidated. Etchy games like Bullet Girls do get English releases in Asia though, how does that happen? The overall Asia market is generally more aligned with Japan culturally than places in the West where you might have difficulty finding a game like Bullet Girls in a shop window. We are slowly influencing the market as best as we can to feature English in as many releases as possible, which is spearheaded by the support our customers show. Bandai Namco Entertainment Asia also deserve a lot of love for their releases. We're incredibly thrilled publishers like H2 Interactive are supporting in the market of these etchy titles with Bullet Girls Fantasia, and we're confident they will see the market is strong for future releases. We're hoping to cement the fact that fans want these games in English, and preferably on disc or cart. You mentioned Bandai Namco Entertainment Asia, it seems that like many of their latest releases are now getting Asian English releases, including some not released over in the West. What factors do you feel have influenced this recent change? Great sales and fan reception both inside and outside of the region, for why some games don't ever make it 
it to the West in any form, it could be many reasons, but a common one is differing licenses per region. Games generally get physical releases in Asia because lots of customers in Asia go to brick and mortar stores and buy games. What would you say to somebody new to importing and maybe somewhat nervous about the process? Importing games to the US is pretty much the exact same as buying domestic. The only difference is your package is traveling a few extra miles. If you are in a country with import tax, we offer customers the option to prepay their duty and tax so there are no surprises on arrival. If you're dying for that 48 hour delivery experience, courier options like FedEx make that for customers on the other side of the globe. What do Play Asia do to help get new games released, either in the West or in Asia? In Asia, our focus is on providing publishers the sales confidence to make the investment of adding English language options to their games. If we can make publishers confident that a minimum amount of game copies will sell, it makes the decision of adding English options in future releases straightforward. That is why I personally think it's incredibly important to share releases like Bullet Girls Fantasia within relevant gaming communities, because I know it has great potential to lead to a lot more of the same, especially with the initial support we've received. For Western releases, our focus is on growing the physical and indie games market to the biggest it can be. Physical games have always been an integral part of PlayerAsia.com and we've been bringing that love to the indie game industry in big ways. Alongside East Asia Soft, we've been able to successfully bring beautiful limited releases of indie titles to the hands of collectors at an affordable price on PS4, Vita and now recently also the Nintendo. Nintendo Switch. We have two releases coming each month for the rest of 2018. Does PlayerAsia potentially have plans to expand more into publishing itself one day? PlayerAsia.com has been supporting customers, publishers and indie developers as a storefront for many years and that will ultimately remain our focus. However, we have incredible success collaborating with East Asian Soft and video game developers from all around the world and will continue to expand that relationship into 2019 and beyond. What kind of changes could help bring more of these types of games to the West. If publishers are okay with localizations that include a big flashing sign that says this character is over 18, publishers could probably have better results. This is a joke. That applies more to a game like Amiga Labyrinth Z or Moe Chronicles, but generally there needs to be a discussion about what separates sex scenes in Western games and the various titles released in Japan. That said, I think the connotation between animation and youth media is steadily weakening in the West. With everything from South Park, Family Guy, and most importantly, the growing popularity of anime, showing that adult topics and themes can be explored through a medium too frequently assumed to be childish. And lastly, can you give us any hints about future plans or surprises that may be in store for Play Asia? An amazing Vita game is coming to play exclusives in July, and lots of Switch love is on its way. We will be at Tokyo Game Show on the hunt for new games. In less flashy news, we are working incredibly hard on improving shipping options and prices, so importing is that much easier. That's all for the interview for this time, but back to Bullet Girls. Bullet Girls Fantasia's release date has now been revealed and it will launch simultaneously in Japan and Asia August 9th. Pre-orders are currently open on the Play Asia store and you can find more details including info on the Play Asia exclusive limited edition via the link in the description. What do you think about the growing practice of Asian English releases? Are you interested in Bullet Girls and what should we ask Play Asia if we speak to them again? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and until next time, thank you for watching.